Hello again, welcome back again to Harry's Jetty Clinic. In this episode, I'm going to revisit uh, a video I made a few weeks ago uh, because I've come up with a better solution for it. The video was entitled Control a Function Using a Spring-Loaded Switch. And I made it in request from somebody who wanted his jetty to operate in this particular way. Let's say that this switch here was his uh, retract switch where he could select wheels up, wheels down. But he didn't want anything to actually happen until he pulled the spring-loaded switch. And then it would go to whichever direction was set on this. And uh, I came up with a solution for it, which involved four logic switches. And it looked like this, where you've got the, uh, the retract uh, up and switch up here, retract down, and then spring-loaded switch up. And it worked through these varieties of gates to finally get an output that you could send to your function. And I said in that video that I suspected there would be a neater way of doing it with three switches, maybe even if you pushed it two switches. Um, I'm doubting you could get it down to two switches, but I have got it down to just three and a much easier control system than that, which is using sort of a lot of gates. You've got and, nands, ors, and, you know, outputs looping back as inputs. Here's a much better way of doing it. Uh, just three gates the AND, another AND, and one of Jetty's A up, B down switches. <clears throat> uh, we'll call this one switch B, this one switch A. What happens is that the retract switch can only ever be down or up. It can't be in both. So at best, only one of these could ever be switched on. And what will happen is that if you put the retract in the up position and ping the spring switch, this AND will switch on just for a moment. Once you release the spring-loaded switch, it'll go off. But that's enough, because if A has gone on, this switch here says A switches me on. The output will go on. And it will stay on until this one, B, switches it off. And the only way to get B to switch it off is to move the retract switch to the down position and ping the spring-loaded switch again. For a moment, that will come on, and because that's switch B, that will switch it off, output goes off, and it will stay on no matter what you do until, once again, both the retract switches in the up position and the spring-loaded switch goes on. That comes on briefly, A switches on, off we go. So, let's uh, just prove it all in action. I've got a very basic model created which has uh, a function of the gear. It's assigned to a switch, the default switch that um, the setup wizard assigned it to. We can leave it at that because we're coming back to assign it to a logic switch. And the servo gear is on channel five. Lovely, thank you, Doke. So we jump straight to advanced properties, logical switches. We'll set up L1, we'll call this um, up. You don't need to give it a name, but uh, particularly helps avoid confusion and it will help demonstrate stuff in the video that I want to show you. I'll say OK to that, enable it, uh, come down, control one will be, uh, I'll put the retracts into the up position for this one. So at the moment, the retracts are down. I want this to be the up sensor. So go in there, push the switch up, Say OK. Come down to Control 2. Ping the spring-loaded switch. Say OK. And it's an AND. OK, so if the retract switch is in the up position and we ping the spring-loaded switch, it switches on. As soon as we release it, it switches off. That's good. Logic switch 2 will be down. to that one, enable that, and lo and behold, easy enough, retract start in the up position, move it to the down position, so it selects that as the on, come down here, control to once again, is the spring loaded switch, say OK to that, and an AND condition, OK, now we can see the outputs here, up, 
will only come on if the switch is in the up position and I pull the spring loaded switch and it goes off. There is no way that down can come on because it requires the switch in the down position and the spring loaded switch. So you can only ever get one of them to come on at any one time and only while you're pulling the spring loaded switch. Okay, uh, so now we need L3 and that uh, I'm not going to bother giving it a label. You can call it gear, retracts, have fun, whatever like. Come down here uh, and we're going to be using the A up, B or A on, B off condition. This one here. So switch A will switch it on and switch B will switch it off. Uh, so there's A, there's B. Which one do we put in there? Well, have a think about this because when you switch the radio on, it's going to default to the off condition. doesn't matter whether you've got the gear switch up or down. It will go to the off condition. And therefore, you want uh, probably that to be your wheels down because uh, you don't want to switch the radio on and the model's sitting there and promptly tries to bring its gear up and break the doors off their hinges and such like. Uh, there may be a condition, a model, that you want the, the retracts or whatever it is you're controlling through this to be in a up position, some other position, in which case think carefully about what's it going to be when you switch the radio on. It's going to be an X, so that position up or down, is the one you want to be as B, because that would be the one that switches it off, and off is the default condition when you switch on. So we want up to switch it on, down to switch it off. Hmm. Press the wrong button as usual. So we said that needs to be the up logic switch. There we go. There's our name for it. That's why it's helpful to have the names. And control 2 will be the down logic switch. OK, so now we can see what's happening. As I say, when you switch the radio on, it will default to the off condition. And therefore, you want that to be the down state of your wheels, for example. I'll move the retract to the down position. I'll pull the switch. Nothing should happen because off is the down condition. You can see control 2 is coming on, which is switching it off. It's off anyway, so nothing happens. We'll switch the switch to the up retracts. Nothing happens until we pull the spring-loaded switch. Control 1, the up state, will briefly switch on. As long as A has switched on, A will go on and it will latch on. There we are. And now it doesn't matter how many times I pull the spring-loaded switch, A is on. So it can't switch on anymore. And if I switch the retracts down, it can't switch off until we've pulled the spring-loaded switch again. So there you go. Much neater. Just remember about which way around you assign these. The way you want the state to be when you switch the radio on, put that in B because that will switch it off and the radio will switch on in the off state. If you see what I mean, I'm sure you do. Now. Having got that, all you need to do is assign this logical switch to the function. So we'll say OK to there, come out, go to the model, function assignment, gear, clear out the physical switch, put in the logical switch 3, and there we go. OK, let's prove it by looking at the servo. It's channel 5. It's at 100% because it's up at the moment. I'll pull the spring-loaded switch. The gear is up, so it will stay there. I'll move the gear switch down. Doesn't move until I pull the spring-loaded switch. There we go. And again, I can pull that as much as I like. I can move that one as much as I like. It's not going to move until we leave it in the up position. Pull that one. And there we go. So have fun with that ability.